Inside this envelope are the secret, private, personal love letters of a total stranger. Hi, I'm Joanna and I buy weird things off the internet. Do you like that there's a plant here? That's not an accident, I put it here for this video. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you are subscribed, thank you. But also, don't forget to hit the bell thingy so you can get notified when I post a new video. And I will post a new video, okay? You can buy a lot of weird things off the internet, especially from eBay. But one weird thing you can buy are vintage love letters. At one point, years ago, someone poured their heart out, all their love and passion onto a letter, mailed it to their loved one, and then somebody sold it on eBay to make a quick buck, and I bought it because I'm nosy. If you're not familiar, people used to take pens and write words on paper. It's kind of like antique sexting through the mail. My love letters are in this envelope. I have not opened it yet. I'm not sure how many are in here. I don't know who wrote these. I don't know what year they're from. I know nothing. If you've ever been in love, you know that it's disgusting. So fair warning, this might be gross. There's gonna be a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, a lot of private thoughts. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. Let's all be a third wheel in this relationship. Okay, I'm gonna open it. There's love in here. I can smell the love, I can't smell anything. Ooh, love letters. Oh, this envelope smells musty. That is a musty. Okay, these are old. These are for sure musty, but they've got a they've got a smoky tobacco smell that makes it. Hmm. Here's a question: If I put out a musty perfume, would you guys buy it? This is a driver's license to drive a tractor from 1940. Oh. There looks like there's some really interesting stuff here, but the thing that I'm really excited about, look at these paper dolls. What? Hello. What? What? Well, I thought I was just buying love letters, but it looks like there's other ephemera in here. Did I say that word right? I've never said that word before in my life. Ephemera. Oh, this is mail that was sent to a dude in Pennsylvania in the 30s and 40s. I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna organize them and put them in order. And we're gonna figure out if there's a love story here, who this person was. We're gonna get down to business. Let's invade some privacy. I'm organizing these letters by date so I can get them in order before I start reading them. All these letters have been sent to a man in Pennsylvania. I'm gonna change his name to Lester, so we're gonna call him Lester. They come from a woman, and we're gonna call her Hannah. Okay, the plot thickens. I have these handwritten letters that are not in envelopes, and so I don't have dates for them, but they appear to be written to Hannah from Lester. So we're gonna have a little bit of both sides of the conversation here. Dear Hannah, I am writing you this little letter as a means of passing away the time. My future happiness depends a great deal upon you, and only you. I can no longer describe my affections toward you as ones of friendship only, for they are instead of the deepest love. Although I am now only a measly schoolboy and cannot as yet offer you great things, I can at the very least offer you an undying affection. As the shades of night are falling fast, I must bring this excuse for a letter to a close. If all plans materialize, I expect to see you Saturday evening. I sincerely remain your admirer, Lester. Lester, so far we can tell he's very self-deprecating. He refers to himself as just a measly schoolboy. So I do wonder if he's still in high school. Okay, so this is a partial letter that Lester wrote to Hannah. I don't have the whole thing, but he's apologizing for something. I cannot tell what he's apologizing for. He does say that she is 17, so likely they're both teenagers when these first letters were written. Again, I say this, I hope you forgive me because if I lose your condolence, I would be losing something not any young man can gain from a pretty young girl of 17. I hope that you have seen the depths of my love and attachments. 
I hope to see you in the near future. Lovingly yours, Lester. I'm not sure what Lester did that he's apologizing for, but once we get into the letters that Hannah wrote, maybe we can find out. June 3rd, 1931. My dearest Lester, I feel unworthy of the kind feelings which you express to me. To you I may say that I love you very deeply, but feel that I am unworthy of you. I remember back from the first day I met you. Your presence filled me with an ecstasy of delight, which grew with every meeting, until I learned to love you with a love I could not fail to show. I shall await your reply with great anxiety. I remain very lovingly yours, Hannah. The ecstasy of delight? That is serious. So we have a letter from Hannah to Lester saying that she forgives him. Ooh, that is musty. July 7th, 1931. My dear Lester, I received the news as to why you did not come up Saturday afternoon and felt hurt about it. I will most heartily forgive you in every way because you are all the world to me. Had it been some other gentleman, I might not have been as ready to forgive him as I am ready to forgive you. The conflict, I guess, was that Lester could not come see her. She was upset, I guess, but now she forgives him. May 27th, 1931. My dear darling sweetheart, I would like to know whether you, Jenny, and Al will come down on Sunday to spend the day with us. In the afternoon, if desirable, we will take a hike to the museum. We will take the old road, which is free from traffic and which affords beautiful scenery. After all, though, it's not the scenery I'm after. It's, well, guess. Ah yes, as I look out from my window, I can visualize your pretty face as though before me. This letter's a little saucy when she says, I'm not after the scenery, I'm after, well, guess. August 13th, 1931. My dear Lester, I have been requested rather unexpectedly to ask you to a corn and doggy roast on Friday evening. And if you wish to go along as I believe you do, please be at my place by 7.30. I want you to ask permission of your parents first. I will not dress up because I am going for a good time. I always enjoy myself being with you. We will all have a good time, so please do not disappoint me. Yours sincerely, Hannah. Imagine writing a letter to ask someone to hang out with you. It was written in 1931, and people definitely had telephones in their homes. I don't think they were necessarily a totally common household fixture yet. I'm sure there is a historian who can just drag me for saying that, but from some Googling, that's the impression I get. I also like how this letter is vaguely threatening. I really want to sign off all my emails with, please do not disappoint me. August 10th, 1931. My dear Lester, I hope that this will find you with as pleasant a recollection of Sunday as I have. I enjoyed myself more than words can express. As I was picking beans, I could not help but gaze at the hillside surrounding me. As I sat on the hillside watching the sun till it set in the west, a deep admiration of love created in my heart. Love for you. You have become to me a part of myself, and I never, never shall part from you in spirit, even if I am forced to in the material life. I am only a farmer's daughter and cannot offer you more than an undying affection. I feel very lonesome at times and cannot help but think of you. Hannah mentions that they'll always be together in spirit, even if they can't be together in the material life. So I am wondering, what is keeping them apart? Is somebody moving away? Is somebody going to college? It's not clear what is separating them exactly. I keep getting distracted by these paper dolls. The little girl is like looking at you and the boy is looking someplace off in the distance. What are they staring at? It's haunting. I must say, this is the most incredible handwriting I've ever seen. Wow. It's the kind of handwriting where you look at it and you're like, how did a human being produce this? It's so beautiful. Okay, I just started reading the first few paragraphs of this letter and there is drama. August 14th. 1931. Mr. Lester Smith, it is with great reluctance that I enter upon a subject which has given me great pain, and upon which silence has become impossible if I would preserve my self-respect. 
You cannot but be aware that I have just reasons for saying that you treated me as mean as a young man could ever treat his girlfriend. I always enjoyed myself coming to your place, but I think I came too often toward last. I will never come again if this is the results that I get. If you are not man enough to show yourself and bring the crystals to me, I will not accept them. The crystals are very pretty, but I am not that vulgar a person as to accept them in such a manner. I can get boyfriends without crystals if you think I can't get a friend unless I have crystals. I feel assured that I have nothing to apologize for. Please excuse my writing. I am nervous and can't write. You need not be afraid to meet me. I will be out of your presence. Yours truly, Hannah. What happened? Crystals? What is she talking about? I was reading it and I'm like, oh no, something bad happened. And then crystals really out of left field. Not sure what the crystal conflict is about, very confused. Sounds like this is a breakup letter. I'm still really thrown by the crystals thing, so apparently he tried to give her crystals of some sort, and I'm wondering if this is like jewelry or what exactly. A lot of things can be made out of crystal. I don't exactly know what they're talking about. We know Hannah was 17, we know she was a farmer's daughter, we know she picked beans sometimes. It looks like it did not work out between Lester and Hannah. RIP. Also, breaking news. I thought all the letters were written by the same woman, but they're actually letters from multiple women. This is the last Hannah letter, and all the other letters are from somebody else. There is more than one love story here. If you wanna hear more about Lester's love life and find out what's in the rest of the letters, please hold on for episode two. I will link it when it comes out. If you haven't seen The Notebook, I'm just gonna reenact the whole thing right now. If I'm a bird, you're a bird. It wasn't over, it still isn't over, rain. That's the movie, okay.